What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmiston here from SchwartzEdmiston.com and today we're going to be looking at how to create underlines for headings using the pseudo element after. So if you're not familiar with the, with the pseudo element after, it basically just allows you to place content. You can either use colon after or colon before depending on where you want to place the content. So if I just write h2 before, then I can add a uh, property of content and then put in any content. So I can just say this is more text. So it allows you to pretty much add things in through CSS. So you can see that this is before, I can also add an after and it puts it after that element. So we're going to use this technique to place a line after our heading elements. And in this case, I want to put my, my underline below all H2 elements. So what we have to do is, first things first, whenever you use after, even if you're not going to put any content, you don't actually want like any words or text after the content, you, you still have to put those quotation marks. So just, but just leave the inside blank. So we have our content. The next, next thing we have to do is give it a position of absolute. We're going to give it a bottom of zero because we want it aligned to the bottom of this text container. <clears throat> I'm going to give it a height of two pixels, a width of 65 pixels. And first we're going to talk about left aligned underlines so I'm just gonna give it a left of zero and finally we'll give it a background of I'm just gonna use my yellow color so I've set up variables here so I could just paste in the hex code for the color but I'm actually just gonna paste in the yellow color variable I'm getting a syntax error So I'm just going to investigate and it's on line 12. Oh, I forgot a colon, a height of two pixels. Okay, so if I jump back up here, you can see my underline is now appearing, but it's not appearing where we want it to. And this is because whenever you set an element absolutely, it gets positioned absolutely relative to a container. So in this case it's being positioned to the nearest relative container which is actually this whole Squarespace block so if I jump in the code the H2 doesn't have a position of relative um, the nearest thing that does have a position of relative is this Squarespace block code you can see here we go position relative so it's being positioned relative to this block and if I hover over it you can see it's at the bottom of the block so it's not behaving how we want it to but it's behaving how it's supposed to so all we have to do is set a an app a relative position on our h2 so if I come up and say h2 position relative <clears throat> it now jumps up exactly where we want it to be so that's exactly how you do an underline for left aligned text if you think that the line is kind of crowding or cramming your text what you can do is you can use the transform property translate and in this case we just want to translate it on the y axis the vertical axis and we can translate it like five pixels and it just jumps down a little bit so I, I actually want to do more than that I'll do like 10 pixels okay so now it's like nicely spaced in between our text and, and the heading <clears throat> so that's a good little trick there the other trick that I want to show you guys is that um, the best way to write this code is actually not h2 in its own brackets and then h2 after in its brackets you can actually do a shortcut 
that comes in handy. If you move that bracket all the way to the bottom and, and replace H2 with AND, AND basically means whatever element is targeted up here. So we have H2 position relative and after. So this is actually saying H2 after. But the cool thing is we can now add, let's say we want our H1 to also have this underline. Now it's H2, H1, position relative, H2, H1, after. So you don't have to rewrite this code for every heading that you add up here if you want it to apply to multiple headings. This ampersand is a really, really cool shortcut for that. So if I scroll up, it's actually, it is here. Um, it's just on a yellow background, which makes it hard to see. So I'll just change that to black there. So you can see it actually did show up. So really cool shortcut there but I only want it applying to my H2 elements. Okay, so that's how you left align it. What about centering the line? What if my text was centered? How would I write that code? Well, all you have to do is add a right of zero and a margin to zero auto. And the line jumps to the center. That's how we have it centered. And if you want it right aligned, let's say your text is right aligned, all you have to do is get rid of the margin and set the left to auto. And you can see it jumps to the right. So there you go. That's exactly how you add underlines to text. If you want it left aligned, I give you the code. If you want it center aligned, I give you the code. And if you want it right aligned, you also have that code. But I want to make this process automatic. I want the underline to show appropriately based on what I've set my text to. If my text is centered, I want the underline to automatically show up centered. If it's left aligned, I want it to automatically show up left aligned, etc. So. I'm going to show you guys how to automate this um, so that it always shows up in the correct spot. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we have to do is in this code we have to set it up for left alignment. So all we have to do is get rid of our right and set the left to zero. So now, okay, so the default is left alignment. I'll explain to you guys how we're going to be targeting this. Um, if I right click on my H2 you can see that when it's centered it gets a inline style of text align oh whoops in this case it's right aligned so it gets a text align of right but if I jump in my text editor and I center this it's gonna get an inline style of text align center and if it's left aligned there's not gonna be any whoops if it's left aligned it's not going to receive any styling at all. So basically you can see here is our code set up for when there's no specific styling set. We want it to be left aligned. But how about if the text is centered? Let's go ahead and set up that styling. So all we have to do is come down here and we're going to add an ampersand. And we're going to target that inline styling of text align center. So ampersand and then open up some brackets and we're gonna say any, in this case, H2 with a style that contains, and to write contains, it's star and equal sign. Any style that contains text align center. We're going, uh, oh, and then we have to add the after. We're going to give it a positioning of margin zero auto as we said before and we're going to give it a right of zero so now you can see automatically our t our underline jump to the center because our text is centered if I left align this it's going to jump automatically to the left so that's perfect all we have to do now is set the specific styling for um, right alignment so all we have to do here is we can just copy this, paste it down below, and we're going to say text align, replace center with right, and we're going to give it a right of zero and a left of 
auto, as we said before. And if we save that, we now have our underlines completely automated. And this is really, really handy. You can see left align, centered, right aligned. This is super handy if you're gonna be handing off the site to a client because they're not gonna to know to come in here and put the specific styling for like a left aligned um, you know, H2 element. They're not gonna know how to put that code in here. So you want it to be completely, you know, happen on its own when you hand off the website. So this is a really cool way to automate that process either for yourself or for your clients. Um, so just a really, really cool technique that I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, whether you use it or not, you know, at least you have the knowledge of how to add an underline to your text. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Quick things that I wanted to leave you with. This styling method of using inline styling to target elements, I use it in this custom Squarespace custom layouts tutorial. In this tutorial, you can sign up for the free training on my website, shortsedmiston.com slash custom layouts with Flexbox. I'm gonna put a link in the YouTube description to this training. It's really cool. Both of these templates I created in Squarespace with the Brian template using this technique. So definitely want you guys to check that out if you haven't yet, completely free. Um, and the next thing that I wanna leave you with is I have a free four day e-course that I'm working on right now. If the positioning of the elements, you know, absolute positioning and relative positioning and all that didn't really make sense to you, it's probably good to, to just sign up for this free four day e-course on learning Squarespace custom CSS because it, it, we're gonna cover all of the basics with that kind of stuff. Um, so highly recommend you check that out. Link will also be in the description below. All right, guys, so hopefully this tutorial helped you guys add a little bit more uh, visual pizzazz to your websites, and hopefully that helped you also automate it if you're going to be handing it off to clients. Thanks.